All right, now we're going to move on to number seven. If you, in case you think it's some weird camera trick, I actually changed versions of the paper hoping I could fix the camera and make the resolution better. Failure, obviously a total waste of my time. So I'm looking on number seven for a major arc for angle three. Here's angle three right here, so I'm going to mark angle three for myself. Uh, the reality of the situation is that a major arc is an arc that is greater than half. So if I chose the arc that I thought should be for angle three, it's going to be right here. That's not more than half, so I've got to go the other direction. Got to go around the other side and make like a little Pac-Man for myself. So here we go. See how it incorporates angle three? The reason I did that is just because I wanted to make like the Pac-Man sign. See, perfect little Pac-Man there. You can put the eyeball. Um, anyway, so all I have to do is name the major arc. The major arc's name is I H J, because I'm going from here to here to here. I could also call it I G J if I feel like I need to do that. So I'll put I G J down if you want to go that direction. Just make sure you put your little roof on top right there, and there you go. So that's a possible way to go about that. Now let's look at 8. Number 8 says FG. FG is right here and it's conveniently marked as a 2. So number 8 is angle 2. Let's move on to number 9. Number 9 says find the measure of the arc or central angle indicated. Assume that the lines which appear to be diameters are actual diameters. So I guess that means that they break the circle in half. And as you know, there are 300, hopefully you know by this point, that there are 360 degrees in a circle. Mm -hmm. So half of that is 180. Yes, that is the worst circle ever. It totally looks like a triangle at the bottom. It's really bad. But uh, anyway, you get the picture. Now, if I have the measurement of HEJ is what I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is start identifying where HEJ is. H E right here and J. So I'm trying to find this whole arc. By the way, the reason I'm not using a highlighter is because you're not allowed to have a highlighter on the ACT, so I'm trying to match up what you are allowed to have. So the HEJ is actually made up of two other angles, or two smaller angles, I should say. So I'm going to put the HEJ here and talk about the other. They're made of two angles, but it's really uh, it's two arcs, but I'm going to name them based on their angles. So HI which would be H-E-I as an angle, so H-I as an arc, plus I-J, both minor arcs. So I don't know what H-E-J is yet, so I'm going to write that down again. I do know that H-I is 76 degrees, which you probably can't see, but now you can a little better. It's 76. Plus... IJ, which is in this region. We don't know what that is yet. So I'm just going to put IJ down. So I really can't go anywhere as far as that's concerned. But the question specifically states that we should use things that look like diameters as diameters. So what we're going to do is start looking to see if we can find information that we can use to figure out what this arc is. So if I take this, which is an actual, it's a page overlay, or it will be, and you are allowed to use a page overlay, it's probably broken up a little more, so they're defined, to, or they're designed to make sure that you can read one sentence or two sentences at a time, but we're going to use it for another purpose, and hopefully nobody will be the wiser. So I'm going to line this up. Here's 180 degrees, right? From here to here. Well, if this is 135, all I have to do is find this. So I say that arc FI is equal to IJ. I'm going to put it over here to make easy transfer later. And then FJ. I did it just like this. I just eliminated this right side here and I'm only looking in the non green part. So I know that FI is equal to 180 degrees. I know that FJ is equal to 135 plus IJ. So if I need to find 
arc ij, I'm just going to subtract 135, just like any good citizen would. I'm going to go into the old calculator if I need to, because, you know, they're provided, so why not? And I get 45. So ij, the arc, equals 45 degrees. So all I have to do is take this 45 and pop it right back up here, and then I can find out what hej is. So 76 degrees plus 45 degrees equals hej, and by the magic of math, I can find out that hej is 121. No problem. That was pretty easy. It, I think it makes it a lot easier if we have the um, little page overlays. It makes it a little bit simpler than I'm doing it as before. So for the next one, I'm going to bring it up close so you can see it. SQT, right there. Here's S, here's Q, and here's T. So we're going to go almost all the way around. So we're looking for a few different components. As you can see, SR is 55, QU is 110. We don't know what UT is. We don't know what QR. I mean, other than there's like the college, but that's not really where we're headed with this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is write down the arc that I'm looking for. So S, Q, and T. I'm going to write any component arcs or any partial ar arcs inside, I should say. So SR is one of them. This should be an equal sign, sorry. RQ. QU. No QU. And then UT. Fill out as much information as possible. SR is 55. RQ, we don't know, so I'm just going to bring that down. QU is 110. And we're still not really sure what UT is happens to be so we can't get any more information right now for this so we're gonna go and look to see if we can find RQ or UT well looky here I found myself a diameter um, Q to T would be 180 so the whole thing here is 180 this component of it is 110 there's only one more component so it would be um, QT equals QU plus UT, and I know that QU is 110. I know that QT is 180 plus UT. Subtract 110. UT is equal to 70 degrees. So I'm going to go back up and park in a 70 right here. I'm going to wait to bring these down for a second because I think I can find RQ in a somewhat similar fashion, I would hope, at least. Oh, look. I just found this. I just turned it a little bit, and hey, what do you know? UR is another, or UR, I guess, a diameter, so congratulations on making that status. It's 180. This is 110. We just went through this 10 seconds ago, so I'm going to go ahead and just take a leap and say that QR is also equal to 70. So now I can just plug all these in. And find out that SQT is equal to 55 plus 70 plus 110 plus 70, just like this. And then I enter, da, 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 305, which makes a lot of sense considering the fact that it's almost a whole circle. And a whole circle is 360. Let's do number 12, because I didn't leave a whole lot of room for number 11, and they're pretty similar, so why not? I need J, K, L. I'll lift this thing up so you can see it. J, K, L. So it's kind of a long arc, certainly in the major arc category. Um, in this situation, it's actually really easy because they give it to you, which is a nice, you know, kind of a strange little turn of events there. They're going to give you this being 135 and they're going to give you this being 80 because the central angle related to the arc is 80 so surprisingly enough uh, so is the arc. So the whole thing looks like JKL 
is equal to um, JK plus KL, which is uh, Superman's real name, I think, when he was on his uh, original planet. JK is 135. Maybe it's KL, doesn't matter. KL is 80. So JKL is equal to 135 plus 80, 215. That was very convenient that it worked out that way, so sometimes you get lucky. Let's look at number 13. Number 13 asks a totally different question. Before, on the other ones, we were asked about measure. That's something to do with angle. Here we're going to talk about length. The first thing we have to know when we do the length is how big the whole circle is because as you can see an arc is part of a circle. So if we're going to figure out how big an arc is just based on the size of its angle, we certainly have to figure out what part of the circle it is because if I have a 30 degree angle on a circle the size of a dime, I will guarantee you that the arc size that I have is much smaller than if I choose a 30 degree angle on a manhole or something like that, which is the thing that goes over top of the sewer drain, not anything else. So um, it'd be much bigger, or maybe a hubcap or something like that. It's a really big circle. Just because it has a 30 degree angle certainly doesn't mean the same. I have to have something to balance it. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the circumference. The best thing about this is because they're central angles, they'll almost always give you a radius. So I totally approve of this because, you know, no diameter. So I'm going to write down the formula for circumference. I'm going to plug in. They want my answers rounded to the nearest tenth, which seems to indicate that they want me to use the calculator value for pi, which I'm totally with. I'm happy to do that for them. Here I go, 2 pi 12, because 12 is the radius. So I get 75.4. I'm going to go ahead and round it in the middle. As a, as a scientist, I don't always agree with that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And it's this miles. See, this thing is huge. This one's supposed to be centimeters, but the pictures look exactly the same. Hmm. Not drawn to scale indeed. Now, um, the other part of it is I have to figure out how much this part makes up of the whole thing. The whole thing is 75.4. That would be the whole circle itself. I need to find out what part of the whole circle this represents. Well, I use the internal angle to do that. And in case you can't see the infinitesimal writing, it's 105 degrees. Now, yesterday we sort of did it the long way, so to, uh, today we're going to start talking about the idea of setting up a proportion. People thought this was much easier. So what we're going to do is uh, set it up I'm going to write the setup down here. So if I'm doing part over the whole, W-H-O-L-E, the part of a circle is whatever the arc length is, or the arc measure, should I say. Measure of the arc over 360, because that's the whole circle. On the other side, I'm going to talk about the length itself. So the hole here would be the circumference. And the top would just be what we're looking for. That's our actual length of arc. So with this information, and probably the smallest and worst handwriting ever to be using on this kind of document camera, measurement of arc, 360, length of arc, circumference. We're going to go back over here. And I'm going to say that the arc length is 105. Or the measurement of arc, I'm sorry, is 105 degrees. The whole circle is 360 degrees. Equals the length of arc, so I'll just put an L there for right now, over the circumference, which I'm just going to bring down, 75.4. Then I'm going to cross multiply and divide. So I do, if you forgot cross multiply and divide, if I were to get rid of these divides, I'd have to multiply. So really, if I just do them at the same time, it would be 105 times 75.4 equals 360 times L. So I'm going to do 
105 times 75.4, and that's hit enter, because why not, 7917. And then I'm going to go and bring down my 360L. To get rid of multiply, you're going to divide. And if you're smart, you left a 7917 on the calculator like this. I actually had to bring it back up. I'm not as smart as I try to let on that I am. I'm going to divide by 360 here, and I get 21.99. They say it around to the nearest tenth, so the 9 brings the 9 up again, so this becomes a 22. So I get 22.0 is the length of the angle, or the length of the arc, I should say. So 22 miles. Now, let's talk about number 14. Number 14, I've got a radius of 9, and I've got a uh, arc measure of 195. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is find the length of the whole circle. So I do C equals 2 pi r, or circumference equals 2 times pi times radius. In another glorious turn of events, I'm already given the radius, so I can just plug in whatever I need to plug in here much like Glade would do, 56.5, and that would be in centimeters. I've got the whole thing, that's the circumference. I know that as a part whole of degree measurements, it's 195 over 360, so I'm looking for the part here. I've got 56.5. All I have to do is do 195 times 56.5 equals a really gigantic number. So I'm going to, I can either write this down, which I suggest you do, just in case. Say you slip and type in the wrong number or some horrible happens. So now I've got this and the worst L ever. So I'm going to get rid of this by dividing 360. I was smart this time, I left it there. 30.6. Pretty simple stuff. If you can remember that it's uh, part of the whole, part of the whole here, one for measure, one for length, you're good to go. Oh, by the way, the length is 30.6 centimeters, which seems to make sense. This is more than half, and it's 56.5, so just make sure your answer seems logical. In the first one, the whole thing is 75.4, and this is about mm, a third of it, so 22 seems reasonable. I'm going to skip 15 and 16. Now, number 17, I'm supposed to find the measure of the arc or central angle indicated. So I've got x, y, w. This type of problem again, we'll only do uh, maybe two of these. I'm going to start looking for diameters. No. Well, that's not helpful. If you mark up what you're looking for, by the way, the x, y, w thing, so this scenario, it'd make your life much easier. Oh, look, see, it knocks right into this line. And hey there, it is a nice diameter for me. So I know that the whole thing, x, w, v, which sounds like an R and B group from the 90s, is x, w plus y, v, or w, v, should I say? Where all shows go to die. w, v is 65 degrees. XWV is 180. Subtract 65 like a gentleman or lady. XW equals 115. Um, because this arc is 115, so is its central angle in relationship to it. So that one's good to go. Check Roger on that one. Let's do LKM. So we're doing number 18, and then we're going to move to the last section, and then we're done. LKM. You can see LKM is the major arc. It goes all the way around. So I'm going to break it into parts. LKM is equal to LK. 
and then km. By the way, if you have a chain of these and the letters together aren't matching, or there's not like a K here and then another K here, something's gone wrong in your life, or you're flipping the letters, which I guess is fine. Um, we're trying to find this whole thing, so we can do LK being 125, and surprisingly enough, KM also being 125. 125 plus 125 seems like 250 to me. So, you know, it's just like having a dollar and a quarter twice. So it would be 250 degrees. Seems reasonable. By the way, if they had asked for LM as a minor arc, you'd have to look at the entire circle. So an entire circle is worth 360. So you look at the whole circle here and however you want to do it. this really long thing. I didn't really need this subtraction sign here, but I put it there anyway. So, you know, move on with your life. And then 110. So that would be, and that looks like this. It wouldn't be awesome if I got the math wrong here. Ah, good. If they were looking for minor arc LM, if you have everything but one and you're looking for the one you need, then all you have to do is subtract from 360. It's a circle. Last one, and I am so over it. Now, the reality of the situation here is that um, I have a gigantic arc in this case, and I'm trying to find the length. So the first thing I do if I try to find length is find the length of the whole thing, which means circumference. Circumference uh, is 2 pi r, as always. 2 pi, and look, they give us a radius 19. I do like a circle problem just because it's always radius and I never have to see that diameter because I always feel weird when I see it. It's like, you know, an X or something or somebody I owe money to more likely. 119.38. This 8 knocks up the 3 to a 4. So that's good. And that's miles. Now all I have to do is set up my proportion. Part over the hole for measure, part over the hole for length. Part is 315. This is a really long arc. 315 over 360 degrees. Might want to mark it as degrees here. That'll make your life easier. The part over here would be the 119.4. By the way, if you're delusional enough, sorry, it's the whole. I don't know what I was thinking. If you're like me and you're delusional enough to think it'll work if you flip it, which I guess I did in my head, it won't work. You have to make sure that you have the totals on the bottom and the parts on the top where I tried to do this, it would have given me the wrong answer. In fact, let's go through with it and see what it would have done. If I had done my continue to not pay attention problem, I would have done 360 times 119.4, 42,984. And then I would divide by 315 and get 136. So somehow my part would be bigger than the whole thing, which makes absolutely no sense. So I'm going to have to go through with this again. Uh, 315 times 119.4. Just like this. I get enter. 37,611. And then I've got 360x, divide by 360, 104.7 the seven moves up the five. And this totally seems like a acceptable answer because it's a little bit smaller than the 119 that the whole circumference represents. And that's a lot of circles. So that seems like a definitely a reasonable answer. And that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, please remember that you can email me or you can talk to me if we happen to be in class right now. Or if not, you can always message me on Edmodo and no other way.